say good morning to you all. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord, all ye lands. It is so good to see all of you all here today, for you all that were able to join in with us, both in person and via live streaming. We are so thankful and elated that you have allowed Second Baptist to be your place of worship this morning. And on behalf of Pastor Barlow and Sister Ruth Barlow, we welcome you to the SNBC family. Amen. Let's just God give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Come on. I know it's about three or four of y'all, but you can do better than that. Our God is still worthy. He's still worthy, church. Amen. To be praised. Amen. Amen. Listen, while I have your attention, we want to be mindful that we want to continue to support the ministry of Second Baptist through your giving. And we thank God for you all who have been able to give during these turbulent times and these uncertain times that we face. There are three ways of giving that we have set up. For all members and for you all that are not members of Second Baptist to support the ministry here, that is through PayPal, that is SNBC1902 at Hotmail.com. You can give by way of Givelify to, to uh, Second Baptist and also the Cash App, which is the dollar sign SNBC1902. Again, you can give to Second Baptist through PayPal. Givelify or Cash App, or if you choose to give the old school way, we're asking that prior to Sunday that you would drop off your tithe and offering at the church, and someone will be here ready to receive the offering on today. And for you all that are mailing in offering, you can, can do so at this time. Amen. Amen. Let us now stand for our vision statement on today. If you are here, if you would stand in your home, you can stand in your bedroom, your living room, or wherever you are as we recite our vision statement together. I see a people of God being one with God's vision for his kingdom. I see the saved reaching the unsaved and uncommitted. I see compassion at work in the lives of people. I see a community of believers in daily communion with the creator of life. All we see transformation and let it start with me. Our scripture will be coming from Psalm 13 verses one through six. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I make decisions alone with sorrow in my heart day after day? How long with my enemy triumph over me? Look at me, answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes or else I will die. And my enemies will say I have overpowered him. My opponents will rejoice because I have shaken. But I trust your mercy. My heart finds joy in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has been good to me. The word of God for the people of God and God's people said amen. Amen. You may be seated at this time. Listen, we believe in the power of prayer. Most importantly, we believe in the God who answers prayer. We believe that the God who answers prayer is the one who is responsible for changing things. I don't know about you, but God has done some things in my life that I didn't even ask that he did. And I'm so grateful that when I didn't have sense enough to ask God to do what needed to be done, God did it anyway. Amen. Amen. And we want to have this opportunity to have intercessory prayer for you. When we say intercessory prayer, all we simply mean is we want to stand in the gap for you and pray for you on today. Because we all know that somebody prayed for us. We are here today because somebody took the time to pray for you and we want to pray for you on today so let us pray father we are grateful for this day we are thankful for your mercy we are thankful for your grace yes, 
we are thank you that you are still good and faithful god we are thankful that you are still in control even in these uncertain times and uncharted waters you have shown yourself worthy to be praised god those you have kept you keep well and for that god we say thank you for your word says if we keep our minds stayed on you you will keep us in perfect peace god we thank you for the peace that passes all understanding on this morning god we extend our prayers to those who have been affected physically emotionally financially by this pandemic God, that you would restore back to them those things that have been lost. God, that you would restore the joy of their salvation. God, you said that you would supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory that are found in Christ Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, we declare that victory and sufficiency be on our side. We plead the blood of Jesus over all those who are suffering in sickness. God, you said in Isaiah 53, that by your stripes we shall be healed. And God, we thank you for our spiritual healing. God, we thank you for the spiritual healing. We thank you for the physical healing, oh God. We thank you that you have decided to visit us here on Second Baptist and through the airwaves. That God, you are not confined to four walls, but God, you transcend the walls that you can touch and move however you decide to touch and move. And for that, God, we say thank you. God, we thank you that you're bigger than anything that we can imagine. God, we pray that your Shekinah glory fall in this place. We pray that your Shekinah glory meet the members and all those who are viewing with us in their homes, that you would touch them right now, that they might receive a word from you, that their lives may be transformed, that they can have a true encounter with the risen Savior. God, right now, we pray that your anointing We'll touch our shepherd on today as he stands to declare a word of hope, a word of encouragement, a word of conviction in these uncertain times that you would gird him with your power, that you would allow him to speak only what you have given him to say. Continue to be with Second Baptist and all the preachers and pastors and church that are doing ministry in these times that you will supply their needs and allow them to be the most effective forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and god we'll be careful to give you the praise you the glory and you the honor it's in jesus name we pray amen Lord, I worship you 
confined to four walls but you're everywhere you're everywhere I move you're everywhere I breathe you're everywhere I am Lord everywhere I am you are Lord thank you Father for your spirit your Holy Spirit hallelujah oh yeah can you see it don't you It's the presence of God in this place. The anointing, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Of the Holy Ghost. It's the presence. It's the presence. Yes, God. Of God. It lifts every burden. Destroys every yoke. It kindles the fire of every living soul. Since Pentecost, your presence near. Now there is no We sing, sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly
and we are very thankful for what the Lord is doing for us in this moment. Those of us who are believers believe that he is keeping us in this moment and that he has given us strength in this moment to face the uncertainties of this season. I'm so happy to stand once again for the Lord. I realize that I'm standing not in my own strength, but I'm standing in his strength. We are most appreciative for members of Second Missionary Baptist, which are part of our eccentric staff to help us to make possible our intercessory worship each Sunday. And we are certainly thankful for them. Again, we are thankful for our minister of Christian education who was still on the job. We thank him for he and his family. And we are appreciative for one of our other ministers, Sister Donna Patton, for being with us this morning. Again, we are so appreciative for the love 
of all of you. We thank God for members of Second Missionary Baptist Church who are not able to be with us but continue to support the minister. We thank God for you and we continue to pray for you and your family. God is so good and he is an awesome God. Amen. He is an awesome God. We thank God for those of you who join in each Sunday morning who are not members of Second Missionary Baptist Church and support this ministry even by just taking the time out to watch it. We thank God for you. I'm going to ask you to pray with me again today as God has given me a word for this season which we find ourselves in. I am a believer that the word of God did not come to us in an abstract moment uh, that God spoke to his prophets in the season of the things that they were experienced and gave them a immediate word for the moment and sometime a prophetic word for the moment. I want you to pray with me as we shall look at this morning the, the word of God I'm using this morning a, a God word version of this particular scripture that's found in 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter and verse 8 through 9. If you're at home, amen, you can act like you're at church if you're a member of Second Baptist, uh, if you'll pause a moment. And just stand with me, make you a part of this setting as much as I can. This is an intercessory worship. And so uh, to make you part of the setting as much as I can, if you like to, you can. If you're at home, pause with me a moment. And for we're here at Second Missionary Baptist Church, we will stand for the reading of God. We're based upon our ability to stand. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 8 through 9 says, and Paul is speaking, I will be staying here in Ephesus unto Pentecost. I have a great opportunity to do effective work here, although there are many people who oppose me. Thus in the reading of God's word. Paul says, I'm going to, you may take your seat. Paul says that I'm going to stay here in Ephesus unto Pentecost. I have a great opportunity to do effective work here, although there are many people who oppose me. Let us pray. Father God, I come now in the precious name of Jesus. Come, Lord, again, ask them for your strength, ask them for your guidance, ask them for your insight, that you allow me to use this moment to give glory unto you, and that this moment be edifying for your people. Touch me, Lord, as only you can. Quicken my spirit that my spirit, Lord, may be keenly aware of the Holy Spirit, and that I will allow the Holy Spirit to guide me in this moment. Lord, I love you, and I know you love me. But not only do you love me, but you love all of your children. Hold us together in this season and give us hope beyond this season. We ask now, Lord, that you strengthen every hearer and every believer in your word. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want us to look at the word of God today. Just for a moment. I want you to take time to digest the word of God. I want you to ask God to give you the closeness that you need right now to him. And that the Holy Spirit can come 
into your life in a way that will give you meaning for the word of God today. To not only give you hope, but will give you guidance. The word of God spoke to me and said to me as I was reading these particular verses that opposition is an open door for opportunity. Paul says, I have a great opportunity to do effective work. But he says, but there are many who oppose me. This particular scripture come to us from Paul third missionary journey. Yeah. Paul had acquainted himself with the Ephesian people on his second missionary journey. He come from Anthony and, and leaving Anthony he made his way to Corinth. And from Corinth he made his way to Ephesus. He stayed there briefly for a moment and left Ephesus for Caesarea and then made his way to Jerusalem. But then on the third missionary journey, he goes back to Antioch. And he leaves Antioch and he now makes his way back to Ephesus. And I want us to see how Paul handled the challenges that he faced. Because today we face a challenge. I want to ask a question today. Have you asked yourself why some people make profit in a crisis and other just panic? I want you to ask God to, to give you the ability to to tune in on the word of God today. Let me ask again, have you asked yourself why some people make profit in a crisis and other people just panic? Allow me to suggest that people who panic see problems on the other hand, people who profit see an opportunity within the crisis. Yeah, yeah. I need to say it again. People who panic see problems. People who profit see an opportunity within the crisis. Many have panic. But there are others who are making profit because they see the opportunity within the crisis. It brings it home to you, it brings it home to me. What do we see? When we look at COVID, 19, the coronavirus, what do we see? Do we see a problem? Or do we see an opportunity within the crisis? What do we see? Our texts help us to understand the benefits of facing a crisis, looking for the opportunity rather than the problem. I want to suggest to you today that God has equipped us as believers to seek the opportunity within the crisis rather than running 
from the problem of the crisis. Yeah. Has not God says that we are the light of the world? Has not God says that we are the salt of the earth? Has not God given us the equipment to face every challenge that comes into our life? Paul says, put on the whole armor of God. And instead of us running from the problem, we need to ask ourselves, God, help me to see the prophet, just help me to see the opportunity within the crisis. And not to hold you long, I have three, some money points I want to raise today. And I want you at home and even here to ask God, as my predecessor used to say, to help you to go home and preach it yourselves. For every now and then, the word of God has to go beyond the doors of the house of worship into the homes of the people who have come and to worship. The first semantic point I want to raise that I saw in the text, and I want to state it like this, that we react to what we see. We react to what we see. I thought about an illustration of two cars driving down a four-lane four highway and, and one car is on the inside, another car on the outside, and, and as they approach the intersection, they see a car getting ready to run the light. The car that's closer to the car speeds up, but the car that falls away from the car puts on brakes. The car that, that this, to the closest, a, he missed the car because he speeded up. The car that was on the outside had a collision with the car because he put on brake and skidded and stopped in the intersection. And so what I saw in that moment that when we see, we see through a filter of our history. So what do you see? Because we react to what we see, and what we see is filtered through the, through the lenses of our history. In the text, Paul is in Ephesus because he's writing Corinthians, 1 Corinthians from Ephesus. He's there in Ephesus, and Paul is in the heat of a battle. Paul, as he, as, 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 Luke recalls in Acts, the 19th chapter, it simply says that while Apollos is in Corinth, Paul now entered to Ephesus. He come across some disciples and he asked them, uh, have you received the Holy Ghost? They said they had not even heard the Holy Ghost. When you read the 19th chapter of uh, Acts, you discover that Paul is having a deal with the local silversmiths who have come against him because they believe that they have, that Paul has disturbed their business. Paul is battling. But yet Paul, in that moment of trials, in that moment of tribulation, he does not see the problem, but he sees an opportunity. I need to talk to somebody today. In the midst of all of that turmoil that's going on, that's a riot that has broken out in the city of Ephesus. Paul could have left, got his coat, and said, I'm not going to deal with it. It's too dangerous to deal with. But in the midst of all of that, he says, I see an opportunity. Yeah. A door has opened for me to do effective work. I'm challenging all of us to see the opportunity. I even suggest that, that amen, that, that when we see the opportunity, souls will be saved. Souls will be saved. And not to keep you alone, the second nugget I saw in the text is that God is a liberator and not a oppressor. Let me explain it to you. One would think that God didn't like Paul 
because he placed Paul in the midst of a struggle. One would think that God was trying to, to oppress, to hold Paul down. But what I discovered in the text, sometimes God uh, plays us in a oppressive situation so we can help deliver somebody else. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. I need to say it again. Sometimes God places us in a oppressive situation so we can help deliver somebody else. Look at the text, amen. There was a disciple that had not heard of the Holy Ghost. Paul's in a oppressive situation, but now he helped him to receive the Holy Ghost. Look at the text in Luke 19. There are some people who are misusing the, the name of Jesus. Paul helped to, to deliver the people from those counterfeits who are misusing the name of Jesus. Every now and then, God places us in oppressive situations to deliver somebody else. Can I argue today? Can I argue today? This is an oppressive situation. It's what you see. This is what you see. But I discovered that sometimes God places us in a present situation to deliver somebody. Let me, let me bring something home. That, that's a young boy, young girl, who lived a life that was contrary to God's word. They lived that life. They had a buddy, they had, they had a buddy in crime, a partner in crime. They both went separate ways. They hadn't seen one another in a long time. But one of the people have turned and given their life to Jesus Christ. And now the other person who's still living a life contrary to God's word. Because of this oppressive situation we see ourselves in, just happen to be surfing the web, website, surfing the inter internet, I should say. And they see that long friend now standing and proclaiming the word for God. They decide, I need to look at it again. And through now discovering that friend, because now we're in a pressing situation, and every preacher now is on the internet. They discover a friend now, and now they change their life because of what they see. They have a friend they used to walk with, and this friend is going in another direction. This friend has given their life to Jesus Christ, but had it not been for the pressing situation that we find ourselves in. Some folk will never come to Jesus Christ. I've learned that God sometimes places us in a pressing situation to help deliver somebody else. Third nugget I want to leave with you today is that believers in Christ are overcomers. I need to say that again. Believers in Jesus Christ are overcomers. Amen. The word of God teaches that we are more than conquerors. We are overcomers. I need to say it again. Believers are, who are in Christ are overcomers. I need to say it again. Believers who are in Christ. I didn't say outside of Christ. I didn't say you knew about him. I didn't say you are reading about him. I'm saying believers who are in Christ are overcomers. Can I help somebody again? Because you see, Amen. You may have believed in him, but you're not walking in the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Oh, help me, Ghost. You see, it's the Holy Spirit that keeps you connected in Christ. Help me, Holy Ghost. And a whole lot of folks believe him. They know what he, they know about him, but they're not in him because they have denied the power of the Holy Ghost. And so I need to say it again. Believers who are in Christ, are overcomers. In other words, the coronavirus does not frighten me. Hit me go. My, my, my willingness to, amen, to wear a mask is not because I'm frightened, but it's because I have a love for my neighbors and my friends. 
Because I know, amen, to die is to, is to have gain. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to help somebody. And so my reaction to the way I respond to COVID is not like the world. The world sees a virus, amen. But I, when I look at it, can I help somebody? I see more than a virus, amen, that cannot be seen with the natural eye. But when I look at COVID-19, I see it's a tool of the devil coming against the body of Christ. And believers in Christ are overcomers. You do know that we have the power to tell the devil to get behind us. Amen. Help me, Holy Ghost. Believers in Christ are overcomers. When I look at this text, when I look at this text, I thought about Jesus Christ. And I thought about Jesus Christ from the reference of the Gospel of Mark, which is the shortest gospel of the four synopsis. And when I was in school, there was one word that we kept looking at at Mark that translate immediately. Translators immediately. Mark does not take time, amen, to talk about the birth of Christ. Every time Mark moved from one narrative, he used the word immediately. In other words, Mark is hearing him to the cross. I want somebody to see where I'm going now. Mark is hearing him to the cross. And what, what I saw in the text, that Christ, amen, Jesus, for Jesus, the cross was not a problem, but an opportunity. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. For Jesus, the cross was not a problem, but an opportunity. So he did not run from the cross. Mark said he ran to the cross. Somebody better hear me today. Mark said that Jesus did not run from the cross, but he ran to the cross. Can I help somebody? I, I, I never forget there was a shooting scene there in Dallas, Texas one day. And instead of the policemen running from the shooter, they ran to the shooter. Somebody, I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. You see, believers, we know that our position is an open door for, uh, for opportunity. And we don't run from the problem, but we run to go through the door. Anybody glad that Jesus did not see the cross as a problem, but he saw it as an opportunity? Anybody glad that he did not run from the cross, but he ran to the cross? And because he ran to the cross, my soul had been set free. Somebody can say hallelujah. Somebody can say hallelujah. Second Baptist, believers, this is our opportunity to be the light, to be the salt that this world needs. Opposition is an open door for opportunity. Take your eye off the problem. See the promise of God and discover the opportunity within the crisis. May God bless you and may God keep you. Opposition is an open door for opportunity. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If it had not been for COVID-19, some of us wouldn't have the opportunity to get a little closer to Jesus. Had not been for COVID-19, some of us have come, us come to the knowledge that we need Christ every moment of our life. Had it not been for COVID-19, some of us would not realize that things can change in a second. You can be up one day and literally down the next day. Thank you, Lord, that you allow us to see oppression 
opposition rather, as a door for opportunity. Thank you, Lord. Somehow I'll get happy today. Quit looking at COVID-19 as a negative and look for the positive. Look how many people have caught COVID-19 but was not hospitalized. Look for what, how nature is healing itself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every now and then, God places us in a pressure situation that somebody, that he may use us to deliver someone else. May God bless you. May God keep you. That is the word for the day. Our position is an open door for opportunity. Thank you, Lord. There never been a civil rights movement had it not been our position. Thank you, Lord. Our position is an open door for opportunity. May God bless you. May God keep you. It's my prayer. Pray that the word of God has helped you. Pray that the word of God will strengthen you on this day. I'm going to ask those who are with me will stand as we give an invitation. And maybe someone on the internet right now. You've been wondering about Jesus Christ. Let me say for certain. Life is for a while. Natural life. But eternal life is forever. We can only see what we need to see. When we are in Jesus Christ. If you out there in. In your home today, you never accepted Christ as your personal Savior. Why not accept Jesus today as your personal Savior? Why not recognize him as the Savior of the world, the Savior of your life? He wants to, want to come in your life today. He wants to be a part of your life. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. And I know that when I say he has this thing, he has this thing. And as believers, I'm willing to do what he will have, have me to do. Because I'm not afraid of dying. Because death for me is life. Not that I want to die, but death for me is life. I understand that an opposition is simply an a door for opportunity. Thank you, Lord. If you out there in, in, in the television land today and you have not accepted Jesus Christ, ask Christ to come to your life now. He said, Lord, here I am, a wretch undone. That's voidness in my life. Acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. Ask him to come in your life. He will save you. He will give you eternal life. May God bless you. May God keep you. It's my prayer. Until next Sunday, the word for the day. Our position is an open door for opportunity. May God bless you and may God keep you. Amen. Let me say to all of you and for you that are viewing it with us, streaming live, we are so thankful again that you have allowed Second Baptist to be your place of worship on today. We pray that the word of God has touched you in a way that only it can and that you would see that opposition is an opportunity to do something great. Let me give the benediction. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you and give you his peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God that are fully revealed in Jesus Christ be yours this day. God pour back into our shepherd as he has poured out to us that you restore him twofold and that the ministry 
throughout the entire world will continue to go forth and see an opportunity to do the great things you've called us to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.